What's up, people? Piz out here, and today I want to talk to you about 2009's Perkins 14, as requested by movie club member Steak Sauce over on my Patreon. And Perkins 14 stars Patrick O'Kane as Hooper, a cop whose young son vanished 10 years ago, along with 13 other kids. One night, Hooper gets called in to work the graveyard shift down at the police station and soon becomes convinced that a man in one of the holding cells is the one responsible for his son's disappearance. Now, after Steak Sauce's previous review request in which I was forced to watch Children of the Living Dead, I had no idea what I was in for with Perkins 14. Now, I'd never heard of Perkins 14 before, and it's one of those After Dark Film Fest titles which really didn't instill a whole lot of confidence in me because what few of those titles I had seen weren't great. Still, I went into Perkins 14 with equal parts optimism and icy cold dread. And I'm happy to say that Perkins 14 is nowhere near as bad as Children of the Living Dead. As a matter of fact, I rather enjoyed some of it. Perkins 14 feels like two movies in one. The first half of the film is rushed, poorly written, and just not good. We're supposed to feel for Hooper, as we see that life after his son's disappearance has not been easy. Hooper's daughter is a recalcitrant goth kid with a Jones for dirtbaggy guys. His marriage has fallen apart, and he's become a guilt-stricken shell of a man. Hooper notices one characteristic that the man in the holding cell possesses and instantly becomes convinced that he is the man responsible for his son's disappearance. It's all way too easy, and the dominoes of suspicion fall in rapid succession following an illegal search of the man's car. Hooper even manages to talk a fellow cop into breaking into the guy's house in search of evidence that will link him to the disappearance. It's all kind of ridiculous, honestly. But that ridiculousness does have a payoff when the Perkins 14 are discovered and set free. They're all returned to their loving families, who welcome them with open arms, knowing that the road ahead will be a long and daunting one, but faithful in love's power to shepherd them through. Just kidding. None of that happens. See, the Perkins 14, after years of torture and PCP consumption, have turned into hopped-up cannibalistic monsters who, once set free, descend upon the town of Perkins, killing and eating whoever they fancy. From there, Perkins 14 turns into a cross between 28 Days Later and Assault on Precinct 13 with some good gore and nice practical makeup effects. This part of the movie which finds Hooper and his family trapped inside the police station while the Perkins 14 are trying to get at them is actually a lot of fun and provides the movie with a couple of scenes of tension and suspense. Now, this part of the movie isn't without its own shortcomings. One character announces to the others that she's going to the bathroom. Now, this character has been locked up the entire time and has no idea what's going on outside of the police station. The other characters are well aware of the fact that the Perkins 14 are extremely dangerous and are very much inside the police station. And yet, nobody bats an eyelash at allowing this character to go to the bathroom alone to take a whiz. As a matter of fact, it's as if the other characters just completely ignore her. They either didn't hear her, or if they did hear her, they just don't give a crap. Needless to say, she never gets to take that whiz. Another character devises a plan to escape the police station now that it's overrun by the Perkins 14, who gained access to the building via the ceiling. So what is her escape plan? We'll go out through the ceiling. She doesn't make it. Those enormous lapses in logic aside, I had a really fun time with this part of Perkins 14, including the downer ending, which I thought was a really nice touch. Perkins 14 is a mixed bag for me. It's half a good movie, but the half that's good is a lot of fun. I can't fully recommend it, but if you're in the mood for half a good movie with some good gore and practical makeup effects, I say check out Perkins 14. Shout out to movie club member Steak Sauce. You've almost redeemed yourself after the Children of the Living Dead fiasco. 
But thank you for being a patron nevertheless. I appreciate your support. If you'd like to have a say in what movies I review on this channel, follow the link in the description or head over to patreon.com forward slash pizow and join the movie club today. If you've seen Perkins 14, please let me know your thoughts on the film down in the comments section below. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care and until next time, peace. A big thank you to all my awesome Patreon supporters. I appreciate your generosity and support of my channel. Become a patron today and join me for monthly live streams and have a say in what movies I review on my channel patreon.com forward slash pizal or follow the link in the description. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.